Hi there and welcome again to this series which I have called Leaders I Love and today we have with us Andy Hamilton who is a director, advisor and investor in Kiwi companies. He was the CEO of the Ice House for 18 years and now is the director of Ice House Ventures which is the investment arm of Ice House among many other interests Andy, one of which includes Menarche which we'll talk about a little bit a forum to help small businesses get the support that they need through COVID-19. And I was reading one of your recent articles where you quantified the size of the small business economy here in New Zealand. And, and to be honest, I didn't know these numbers. It's really interesting to me that the small business economy represents nearly 30% of our country's yeah. GDP. And they employ 600,000 Kiwis, which of course, you know, the ripple effect of that is that they support hundreds and thousands of families in New Zealand. So as a small business owner myself, um, I am really grateful for this initiative. I think it's really inspiring and my gratitude too for you and of course your co-founder Pat who founded Manaki for that initiative but everything else that you're doing through this time to prop us up, us being small businesses which as you say are the backbone of New Zealand. So thank you. That is my pleasure but uh, the, the thing I would say in addition to that is I get just as much back as well. You know, mm -hmm. I think every small business owner, as much as they may need help and support, they also provide the wind and the sails for many of us because I think we want to get up and feel like we're making a difference and helping. And when you see that in people, it gives you uh, a skip in the step. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and sometimes I like to talk to people about um, smiling with our whole bodies. So you talk yeah. about skip in the step, but also, you know, we can really kind of smile with our bodies and feel, and in doing that, almost kind of energetically connect to others, especially in isolation as we are now, when we can't be physically connected with people, we can, we can do it in that way. Um, mm. In terms of the inspiration and, and what you're seeing, you recently said that every day we can get inspired if we look hard enough. And I actually think, you know, we don't have to look that hard in this time because there are so many leaders who are showing up and standing tall despite their fear and despite the uncertainty. And I think it's our Kiwi she'll be right and number eight wire mentality. But I also believe that in this time, many people are carving out a little bit of space to be a little more introspective and whether consciously or subconsciously are connecting to their values, core values to fortify them through this time. And so I'd love to ask you if you would share one or a few of your core values that you've connected to, which are providing you a sense of stability and hope. That's an interesting question. I suppose a couple of things. Um... For me, the uh, kindness is um, a really important value, uh, and that that's twofold actually, because that's kindness to people yeah. uh, who are suffering, but it's also kindness to people who are, I would say, are shouting. Uh, mm -hmm. And one of the things I've noticed through this COVID period is people get afraid and concerned about what's happening to them and their family and their whanau, and that can lead them to shout and. You know, what I've said to many of the Manaki team is, even when people do that, let's just show them love, let's show them kindness, because this is the situation that's impacting on them. And to not truly believe that they are mean people, it's just more that's the situation that's happened to them. I think another uh, value that I have is curiosity, uh, which is to ask questions, uh, which is linked to my kind of third bit, which is, a really strong value for me is to help people. So mm -hmm. kindness to listen, uh, uh, curiosity, and then to help. Because I think I get so much more from that when I see people surviving, achieving, having little wins. That gives me a huge amount of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really special and important in these times. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think those three things actually link really nicely to what some people have said of you, which is that you are someone who radiates love from every pore. And so I'm interested to talk with you about love and business, because mm -hmm. it's often not talked about, certainly not in terms of the word love, yet all virtues stem from love. So generosity, compassion, inclusion, kindness, as you've said, even curiosity, you know, that ability to um, put yourself out there, but also listen and take it in. That that comes into you, into your mind, but also into your heart and body. And so, you know, so much of what we do stems from love. And I'm interested to know from you how you see these qualities as escalating in importance. Um, and I suppose by that I mean escalating in importance to drive the growth of businesses and economic development through and beyond COVID. Well, so a couple of things there, you know, um, I don't think if you talk to people over the last five, 10, 15 years who engaged with me, I don't think at times they would have said those, those nicer things. They would have said that I was a bit rude and a bit agitating and maybe even shouting myself. And I think my breakthrough on that came, I was behaving like that because it was actually more about me. I was actually trying to justify my self and, and my insecurities about how I felt about myself. And that's what emanated in my behavior. Once I actually, through working with an amazing lady called Jane Yates, I actually learned that I needed to be kinder to myself and I needed to love myself more. Once I did that, I didn't have anything to prove. I was like, you know, and that meant that I didn't have to go out there and say, look at me, I'm amazing. And that actually unbelievably freed me to actually see the good in all people, you know? and. And so for me, it's like you see the good in people, you see the potential, and then you're like, right, not how do I get them to do what I want them to do, how do I help them with that love and that openness actually achieve what they want to achieve? And mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, it, and it makes you feel way lighter. Mm -hmm. I think it's so easy to be judgmental. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you just have to battle that. And, you know, one of the things that I found extraordinary with the Monarchy team, which is founded by an agency by Pat and Jada and Monty Beetham, is the love that they showed the day that I walked into their office. It actually made me want to be a part of their family because of the way that they were very open with me. And so I think, you know, it's quite easy to just form views and judgments. It's harder to be open about those things. And I just, I think that's a continuing opportunity for me but it's also a continuing opportunity for others around doing that. Mm, absolutely and I think you know in terms of your journey I think so many of us have been on or, or maybe are still on that journey which is actually about understanding we have an ego and when we can recognize that it's the ego at play not our you know, fundamental goodness, we can actually say, hey, ego or inner critic, I see you, but actually I'm going to put you in the back seat. I'm in the driver's seat. And, and as you say, when you're able to do that, it does make you feel lighter. It creates a spaciousness to be the things that you want to be for you, curious and, you know, an amazing listener, kind, all of those things. Um, tell us a little bit more so about the anarchy. Well, yeah, just one of the other things. The other thing that I've also observed through this time is that a lot of people are isolated. And mm -hmm. one of the secret, one of my superhuman powers that I have, which I've learned from my daughter's hockey coach, coach about, is bringing people together. And so through this time, a few I've trialed a few things where I have grouped 20 founders together and said, what's going on? What are you doing today? What's hard? What's easy? And to see how people do that and share with each other, it opens them up and it makes them way more humble mm. and also ready to accept help. Because one of the things that I really am big on is helping people feel safe to ask for help. Because mm. once you actually ask for help, it's like putting a mirror up and going, whoa, I asked for that. And you know, the other thing I've been working on is when people express gratitude to me, 
I can accept that with the love and just be very proud of that without going, oh yeah, mate, it's all good. Let's just move on and embracing okay. that. But you asked me about Manaki. So look, Manaki was created, I think on about the, on a Monday of late March where the owners of Indigo, which is an agency, innovation agency, were faced with, wow, this, these things, this COVID thing's quite bad. And they had to, in three days, make some big decisions around their rent. They looked at their team, they looked at their clients, and they said, right, we're, we're okay, we're going to get through. But all these decisions we had, it's pretty tough. What's it going to be like for other small business owners? And then we just sat down and went, right, why don't we just create a platform that people can ask questions and wouldn't it be great if we get all these amazing advisors to help small business because small business normally can't access those advisors mm -hmm. and it was a simple idea monday we thought about it thursday we started coding sunday afternoon we went to a whole bunch of advisors and we got like 40 who said yes monday we opened the platform and then you know that's three four five six weeks ago i don't even remember you know and it's a really simple idea Small business owners come to the site, they ask a question in areas, you know, I'm struggling with my landlord, uh, I can't pay my bills, I want to learn about how to do more Facebook advertising, um, I want to access this, that, whatever their questions are, then we've got a collection, now 175 advisors, who get automated questions that they can respond on the platform, and, you know, it's question and answer. And then we've added a few inspirational podcasts and Instagram lives to broaden the catchment um, to support small business owners. It's pretty cool. It's so cool. And to, to hear that it was, you know, conceived of on a Monday, coding started Thursday and it was live the next week is, is inspiring in itself. And I can understand that, you know, as you walked in and, and felt that love from Pat and Monty and the others, how you and all of those 175 advisors would want to help. Because when you are welcomed into something that is moving fast, according to the needs of the many and done with love it just it's a no-brainer to me and the platform's so simple to use um, I think it's fantastic and yeah I was gonna say you know the thing is I think about I think about the advisors and you know we send them automated questions and then sometimes we chase them up and say can you answer this and I've been so inspired by their willingness to help has been incredible, all volunteer. Like Anna Stretton is the most incredible lady, generous, kind, sharing. But I think what I would also say, which I think all the advisors would be who they're most proud of, is the owners that are asking for the help. Mm. You know, that's awesome. And it actually, it's a really interesting stat, right, on, on our site, which you you probably have some insight in. The day we changed the the login so that you could post anonymously we mm -hmm. doubled the questions we wow. doubled in one day because people were like oh i can i still have to log onto the site but i could post this anonymously and that we doubled which is interesting about kiwi psyche yeah it is interesting um i think you know one of the um one of the challenges that all humans have and is part of the Kiwi psyche is when we attach our self-worth to who we are and the roles that we hold and how well we're doing and our success. And, you know, that's, that can be changed. That's conditioning and patterning. Um, and it can be changed, but it takes a while. So to make a really quick change, as you and the team did, to allow people to post anonymously, you know, it does away with that, with that challenge or that resistance. Um, and just on help, one thing I'd love to add into that, um, and, and I talk to a lot of my clients about this when they are, you know, scared or nervous about asking for help, is that actually humans are hardwired for connection and we all want to and really tend to enjoy helping others. It's just when we need help that that block comes up. Mm. So I often say to people, think about the fact that when you ask someone else for help, you are giving them the opportunity to do what actually they would love to do, which is give you that help back. So if you can actually put yourself in the person's shoes whom you're asking for help and think of it as giving them an opportunity to step into their natural talents and strengths, 
it might just ease the pathway um, for you to actually, you know, take that step to ask for help. Um, so it's really good, tonight. really good advice. Yeah, really good advice. Something that I'm seeing, and you know, it's with Menarche, it's with so many initiatives and things out there through this whole COVID great pause, as people are calling it, is a deeper intentional collective consciousness emerging. And with it, I would say deeper connections to self and to purpose and to other. So I'd love to ask you, what are you seeing that's inspiring to you? And what is your vision for how our experiences in COVID will shape the future of New Zealand and its backbone of small business? Well, look, I think, you know, you touched on like a really important thing that I think we all feel and are seeing, which is um, a stronger sense of connectedness, mm -hmm. a stronger sense of local and, um, you know, being local. I don't know whether that goes to being nationalistic. I think it goes to more to that concept of whanau and looking after your family and being kind to your neighbours and, and helping people in your community. So that's a, you know, that is a incredibly strong uh, trend that I've seen. I think the other thing I've seen is stripping back. So I think a lot of people are kind of going, how much do I need? Do I really need that new car? Do I, you know, um, need that? I think the third bit is this, the swell of purpose. Now, I don't know how that, you know, is going to play out. Purpose around sustainability, purpose around things like people who are less off than you. Um, I don't, I get worried that we will revert. We will revert to go into the supermarkets. We will revert to, you know, uh, buying products with unsustainable packaging. We will revert to consuming stuff that pollutes, you know, uh, our atmospheres, but maybe not. I just don't know. I mean, it takes, what does it take to create a revolution? 3%. You know, it's a small voice that that does that, but I think it's hard for me to predict mm. the future beyond those factors, mm. other than it feels, you know, it feels quite deep right now. Mm. Again, you know, I, I'm at pains to think about the people who've lost their jobs and lost their livelihoods mm. and you know, what can be done, what they can do for themselves and what people like us can do to help them. But I don't know, it's quite interesting. The stripping back is a very interesting philosophy that a number of people in our society had before, mm. uh, but we all get carried away with the consumerization of what you need, mm. you think you need in your life. I completely agree and and you know we're experiencing that in our household and and I I worry too about you know going back to what was because I think we have an opportunity in front of us to a lot of people are talking about creating the new normal and I don't like the word normal because I don't think there is a normal there just is what is now so I think it, it it really is an opportunity for us to be present with how we have experienced these last few weeks, what we haven't actually needed and what we don't actually miss, and to be really intentional about stepping forward, not back to what was, but stepping forward into the way that we want to lead ourselves and, and live our lives. So I agree, I think it's going to be fascinating and I agree it feels deep. And I also am conscious, as you are, of those who have lost jobs, have lost livelihoods, have had to change their business model, have lost businesses. There is a lot of loss out there. And so I'd love to ask you if you have a message for people who are in a particular darkness and really struggling right now, what would your message to them be? Well, I think there are a couple of things. If if you have suffered in your in your earlier years from recessions or moments or you know physical occurrences you, you know and you've got through those to look back into those times and get the strength to know that you can get through this and, and that you'll be okay the second thing i think is to reach out to others who are in that situation not not to get the solution but just to be with them and talk about what they did when they got in that situation 
And then the third thing I say is there are people in this situation like all of us that you can reach out to and you can fortify yourself through that as well. I think overall the really big thing is to be open mm. and not to be embarrassed, not to be afraid. And and if you share that, I think it makes it can make a really, really big difference. But that's a battle, right? Because you've got to be you have to feel that when you're open with people that they will hold your heart in their hands and treat it kindly. Absolutely. It's um, it's a, a very vulnerable thing for many to be open, but on the other side of vulnerability is courage. And so, and, and you know, the etymology of the word courage, where it comes from is that it means with heart. So I often think, you know, I talk about presence, if we can bring ourselves into presence and connect with how we feel and how we want to feel, and if we can move with that intention, it will start to grow the courage within us that will allow us to step into or lean into vulnerability and then connect with others. Yeah, and it's, you know, I always think about um, this lady, Jane Yates, I worked with. I, whenever I sat with her, I knew that she could see into me. Mm. She could actually see whether I was happy, whether I was not happy. And, and I knew that, mm. which meant I couldn't hide that from her. And I didn't want to hide that from her because I actually felt at peace mm. when I was with her because I knew that she had my heart in her hands. I think it's pretty special, actually. That on, I, I actually just got tingles. Like That's really really special and really powerful what a gift mm. yeah she's amazing so what do you think is the most powerful universal human quality that we can all harness right now uh, well i think kindness is something that um is to me is a for me is very important whether that's important to others as well but i think if we show kindness and thoughtfulness to other people I really think that makes a difference, calling the neighbour, calling the auntie, calling the nephew, and just reaching out and saying, how are you going? Mm. I think is, you know, and with meaning, when you ask that question, you're actually listening back to what they say. So for me, that the kindness and the reaching out, I think is a really important thing. And, you know, the whole philosophy of Manaki is to put others ahead of yourself, mm. to care for, to look out for, to respect. I think if we start with that, you know, I truly believe that the riches come back as a result of giving to others. Mm, absolutely. And it feels, you know, many people say it feels better to give than to receive. It's that whole help thing again, isn't it? So I agree with that. I love that. And so many people that I'm talking with are, you know, answering with shades of the same kindness, compassion, inclusion, all of those things. So I've got I one question. Well, I, you know, one thing I'd say as well is I think it's important for all of us to strip away that one of the great things that happens in this isolation is all of the structure around you, if you're a big CEO, like, you know, I was a CEO of the Ice House. If you take all those away and you just stand there naked and say, I'm Andy, mm -hmm. and then you go out to work with, be open to show care and respect for others, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. You yourself actually have an opportunity to do I think, and receive so much more. I think that's important. We need to just take away all our own preconceptions of how fancy or otherwise we are or how we feel about ourselves, and just say, just a normal person. 100%. And, you know, and that is the ego again. It's the inner critic that comes. Um, and that's why I talk about being present within your body and actually connecting to your values and your core desired feelings, how you want to be and how you want to show up. Because when you do that, you can do so with integrity, without that voice in your mind. I mean, it's, it's a journey, you know. You don't just do it just like that. But I think when... When you can do that and when you are given from other people around you, as you say, the space and the opportunity to be real and to be raw, to be authentic. I mean, what we're really talking about is authenticity. Yeah, you are. Yeah, we are. So I've got one final question for you, which is what did you never consider before COVID-19 that now seems possible? I think 
for me, actually, the very interesting, this is a personal thing, you know, I'd had 18 years at the Ice House, mm. and I, going into COVID, thought, w will I ever find something that provides as much energy and fulfillment? You know, or will I be a vacant space of l no excitement? And so my own personal journey is what I found is that that energy I have has a place in the world after the ice house. And I love the ice house for everything that it gave to me. Um, but also there are other people out there, other organizations doing remarkable things that I can partner with going forward. If I think about, you know, the personal thing, it's the stillness that I never really imagined was required now as a really important part of my ongoing life. Mm. The stillness is something that I probably didn't have that much before. And now, you know, I do. And that stillness is something I don't want to let go. Mm. What a beautiful realisation. I think, I think you would not be alone. I think many people are realising the power and the beauty of stillness and taking time to reflect. And, you know, that's mindfulness. You've talked a little bit throughout about not mm. judging yourself, not being judged by others. Mindfulness is simply present non-judgmental awareness. And so when we can create the time to be mindful, there's so much power in that for our own sense of, of fortitude stability and hope but also that creates the space for what you desire which is curiosity creativity innovation so I think it will be very interesting to see out the back of this out the other side of this how the stillness that many of us are finding starts to manifest into you know new creations new ideas and new possibilities and opportunities for us in New Zealand and beyond um, it is exciting. It, yeah, it's exciting. It is. It is. And it is. <laughs> it's really exciting. I could go on and on and on, but um, I know that you're a busy man and you have energy to expend in other places. So I did want to thank you so much for joining me here as part of this series. And, you know, you, you do expend your energy in such beautiful ways. You're always, you know, propping up and showcasing other businesses and other people, which is so wonderful. And I know so many people will be grateful for it. But today, I'm really grateful and it's been wonderful to actually talk to you about you and get to the heart of you so thank you it is my pleasure I've enjoyed it too and I've learned some stuff so thank you very much fantastic thank you